Hello, everybody. The DUI guy is back. We are back with some more Saturday night content. I missed you guys. It's been a hot minute. When was the last time I've gone live? It's been uh, it's been a little while. I did one in December, and uh, I told you guys that I'll come back in January, so that's what we're doing. And today we're going to be talking about entrapment. Give me just a second here. Hey, Barlight, F. Lotog, Kevin Coburn, Government Watchdog. <laughs> I love the name, man. Thanks very much, Barlight. Hey, Mike. Hey, Douglas. Hello from Scotland, Irene Guy. Or is it Guy? It says, love your videos. Thank you so much. Dean Vec. John Doe, old fat white guy, what's up? <laughs> Goosey Doo, Pastor Tom, how's everybody doing? Hello, 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 and welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, the last one was, yeah, it's been a while. It's been almost a month, uh, December 12th. So it's actually been exactly a month, four weeks. Wow, wow. Uh, I talked about how... Uh, backed up the American court system is since the lockdown began and how uh, we could help it. That was a fun stream. That was a fun stream. Uh, not as fun as the one before of why you should never, ever talk to the police uh, under any circumstances ever. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Joey, Captain, Nick, Alfrey, Birmingham, United Kingdom is in the house. Ciao, busy banty. Good to see you. Good to see you. Canine stream was pretty cool. Yeah, that one was a while ago. Absolutely. Uh, Irene guy says, I'm starting my law degree and want to help people against the corrupt police. Welcome. Welcome. Hopefully uh, you'll be part of the team, part of the force, part of the ship, part of the crew here very, very shortly. Oh, I just realized I didn't turn my ring light on. I knew I forgot something. It, it seemed a little dark in here. There we go. Ah, that's so much better. There we go. Much, much better. USA here. Hey, Anthony. Pastor Tom. Yeah. <laughs> F. Lotog is right. And man, you've been subscribed for, you got a badge, F. Lotog. I like your badge. Same with Busy Banty. You guys both have the same badge. I think it's the, the three-month badge. That is awesome, you guys. That is so cool. We'll talk about membership in just a second. But I mean, I guess it's just a, it's a good segue regardless um, to talk about it. You guys can see that, um, I don't know if you can see the green, the names in green, actually, as a matter of fact. I don't know if it's visible for everybody. I think it is. I think it is. Well, you can see the the little um, the little badge that F. Lotog has next to his name, that little blue hammer with, like, looks like it's it's a gavel. Uh, but, it you know, it's kind of like coming down. It kind of looks like a hammer when it's small, doesn't it? Uh, but, yeah, it's a gavel. And uh, you get a badge when you become a, a member. And the longer you are a member, the cooler the badge gets. So uh, members get uh, perks that you get uh, special member-only memes. And Flowtog or Busy Banty, if you guys want to share those memes in the chat uh, so that people know, uh, feel free to do that right now. Uh, and then there is... Um, the member only memes, of course, they're available only to uh, to the the people who are registered as members. Uh, it's not mandatory; it's optional. I obviously I I'm pushing for it because you get some fun stuff with it. Um, why are the police so corrupt? Asked uh, Rich Andrews. 
you'll find out in this stream how how corrupt they truly are because this topic is going to open it's going to open a can of worms on on a few different levels so um i think i think this is going to be a great 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 stream so we talked about memberships uh the the channel i am i am in awe you guys i am i am literally speechless um when i saw the the statistics i mean my channel has has gone through the roof uh views wise and membership wise and subscriber wise um i don't know what is happening i like it <laughs> please make it not stop youtube probably jinxed it by saying that but uh we've been getting like thousands of views an hour uh mostly because of one of my latest videos but i don't know if it's the only uh trigger i think the youtube algorithm like picked it up or something because we're getting much much like the volume of of views is, is just astronomical um on that video and then on the channel itself obviously they've skyrocketed i mean even subscriber wise i think we we were able to garner like 4000 subscribers in like 10 days i mean that's that's completely unprecedented unprecedented 4000 subs in 10 days that's basically an average of 400 a day these are numbers i've never seen before so that is really freaking cool uh if you swear and try to ridicule other people in the chat, I will silence you. So please don't do that. A hey, sir, I'm looking at you. There we go. All right. Um, thank you, Rasha. I don't think I have any moderators in the chat. Do I? If I do, please let me know. Otherwise, it means I'm going to have to man. Um, the chat as well. Or maybe I'm just going to make F Lotog a moderator. What do you think about that F Lotog? You you've been you've been pretty consistent at uh coming coming on this channel and uh I trust you. You seem like a a really good guy. Uh I don't see a reason why not. You know what? I'm not even going to wait for an answer. I'm just going to make you a moderator. F Lotog, welcome to the DUI guys channel. Oh, there's Kim. All right. Well, all right, we got a moderator. Now we got two moderators. <laughs> we got Kim and we got F Lotog. Hey, Kim. So Kim's a moderator. She's also got that cool badge. Um, thank you, F Lotog. Welcome to the DUI guys uh, moderator team. Yep, your your name's in blue, Bubba. You got the little the little wrench next to it. So. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, there you go. You got it. So yeah, feel free to just pay attention. You know, uh, I don't need to tell you what what to do as a moderator. I think you already know. Just pay attention what people say, and uh, if they're out of line, silence them or ban them right away, depending on the content uh, of of what they're saying. So yeah, um, I'm I am literally like <laughs> like. I have no words. I have, I don't know what's going on. I hope it keeps going, but I don't know. It's insane. 4,000 subs in, in 10 days is, I thought it was going to take me to like the end of the year to rack up a hundred K to get that, uh, that silver badge. I, I don't think so anymore. Uh, thank you, William. I, I really don't think so. I, I have a feeling, a very strong feeling. If things keep up in this rate, who knows, maybe even, not next month, but in like March or April, I'm going to hit that goal, which is insane, insane. Uh, I am literally speechless. So anyway, um, jury trials, by the way, a little update as well on that. Um, you all saw uh, I have posted that one video uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that's the one that's getting a lot of traction. Uh, I don't I have a couple more, so be on the lookout in the next few weeks or a couple of months because I, I really have to drag them out because I have, you know, I, I told you a long time ago I ran out of content and I'm literally digging uh, and finding stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be able to post a couple more videos here in the coming months, but I have to really spread it out so that uh, 
I, I know it means you guys have to keep waiting, but I have to please the algorithm, which really sucks. By the way, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime I go live or when I finally do post those videos that I am telling you about right now. Um, and when, obviously, we go back to court, we're going to be able to get some more videos um, and post them to the channel. So on that note, thank you, Busy Banty, for the five bucks, by the way. <laughs> she says she loves the memes. Thanks for the coffee. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully we're – so trials have been postponed – uh, officially by the Supreme Court on Thursday or Wednesday of this week uh, to April 1st. So we got another extension. So the entire month of January, February, and March, we're not going to have a single jury trial. That's pretty much, that's it. That's a slam dunk. Supreme Court has spoken of Kentucky. The Supreme Court has spoken and uh, there's not going to be, they're not going to be any jury trials. Uh, it probably, given the state that we are in with the vaccination being pretty slow in its dissemination, we're probably going to see an extension of that as well. I mean, obviously, I can't predict which way it's going to go and how it's going to go. But if uh, historically, so far, what it's been looking like is anything of a factor, we're probably going to see an extension on that as well. So probably no jury trials until the summer uh, is my guess. So, you know, summer starts, what, June 21st, 22nd? My guess is uh, in the summer either mid to late summer, we're finally going to be able to see some jury trials. And it, it's going to be really, really, really fun and, and cool to, to finally feed you guys some new content. And at the end of the day, I mean, the content is really the, the, the final step in all of this. I can't wait to get back into that courtroom. It's been so long. I mean, the last case I tried was in, in February of last year. It's been nearly a year since I've actually stepped foot in a courtroom to try a case. And I really, really miss it. I really do. I, I can't wait to, to get back. And I have such a backlog of trials now. So we're going to have to try all those cases almost back to back, which is going to be, a, you know, it's going to be a drag, but you got to do what you got to do. Right. So clients paid. So we're going to go forward. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, that's the update on that. Uh, we're almost at 57, by the way. Somebody asked, I think, in the chat. Uh, we're almost at 57,000 subscribers. I'm like, according to my stats right now, I'm looking at them. Uh, we're like 13 shy of 57,000. So <laughs> insane, absolutely insane. It was literally 52, like right before the, the new year. So amazing. Um, Anthony, oh, this is going to take me a second to pronounce. Lotzenheiser, I think I got that right. Anthony Lotzenheiser. What, if any effect, he asks, would the legalization, decriminalization on cannabis have on DUIs? You know what, buddy? I'm going to write that one down. I think that is actually an excellent question for a totally separate live stream. I've done uh, a marijuana cannabis uh, live stream before, but never actually on the topic of the legalization of cannabis and how and what effects it would have. And again, it's kind of difficult for me to talk about this topic. I'll have to do some research um, because marijuana is still not legal in any way, shape or form in Kentucky, except CBD, which I don't count. Uh, THC is illegal. Uh, JJE, there he is. If you guys remember the live stream I did on how username JJE can borrow 10 bucks or can borrow money. He's the guy. This is the guy. This is him. This is this is the guy right here. You see him, JJE. This is the guy. Where were you a month and a half ago, bro? Where the hell were you, JJE? We're just gonna sit here and wait until you answer. Answer for your crimes, JJE. Explain your absence. November fourteenth is when I streamed that. I'm back in action, he says. That's hilarious. I'm just giving you crap, dude. I'm just giving you crap. Uh, this is this is the stream, by the way. This this was the stream. Uh, leave it to me to to take a, a troll's question and turn it into an actual conversation, right? Can cops sit outside a bar and wait for people to bust them? Yeah, absolutely. That's an easy one. Um, okay, so we covered the intro. Let's get started, shall we? 
let's get started. We got about 122 people in here right now. I think this is a good time to start. So and everyone who is new here, welcome. My name is Larry Foreman, also known as the DUI guy. I practice law in Kentucky. Uh, and today we're, we cover every week, uh, we cover a different topic. Uh, I did take a short break there in the summer, uh, fall of last year. And then, um, another couple of weeks have gone by since my last live stream. We're going to keep these pretty consistent. Uh, I'm going to try and stream every Saturday, barring any, uh, travel or court cases or illness or whatever. So, uh, yeah, um, we're, we're uh, what's today, the 9th, so the next live stream will be on the 16th, 23rd, 30th, and so on. Again, unless something changes, I'll let you guys know, but be on the lookout. It's always every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 5.30 Central, 4.30 Mountain, and 3.30 Pacific. So, wow, we're already at 146 while I was giving that introduction. So, <laughs> uh, today's topic is entrapment, or more specifically, the actual full title of the video uh, oh, by the way, yeah, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, hit that notification bell. And if you're so inclined, you can join as a member. Um, so thank you all for ev everyone who have already uh, liked the video and uh, commented and commented in the chat as well. So you can comment after the video is posted on my channel as this will be posted on my channel. So the topic today is, this is going to be fascinating, you guys. I've, uh, I've prepared some good, good stuff for you all. And uh, uh, today's topic is entrapment. And how does it differ from a cop, or me as Joe Citizen, lying both on the stand and on the streets? Okay. So I get this question a lot. Uh, what is entrapment? Okay, that's the first part. The question is almost like broken down in at least two or three parts. Uh, what is entrapment and how is it different? This is the question I actually got from one of the users in uh, one of my, uh, I think I asked, what do you guys want to want to hear me speak about? And this was one of the topics, unlike JJE, who was talking about how he can borrow money from me. So uh, this was an actual good one. Sorry, JJE. No, I'm kidding. Yours was fun too. I'm glad I did it. Anyway, uh, so what is entrapment and how is it different from the good old fashioned plain lying done by the cops on the stand and on the street? Also, why can the cops lie and we as Joe citizens and Jane citizens can't, right? So really you're asking when that question is asked, you're asking two, if not three different things here. First of all, what is the conduct that the officer has to do in order for it to be considered, quote unquote, entrapment by the courts? Now, don't forget, entrapment is an affirmative defense. So you don't simply walk in, argue, Your Honor, uh, I was entrapped. I argue entrapment and the prosecutor drops the case. That's not how it works. Entrapment basically means uh, it's, it's like a, any other affirmative defense, like self-defense, for instance, is a good uh, a, a analogy. Uh, you admit the actions, okay? You have to admit the crime. You have to admit the crime. So you say, yes, I did do this, this being the crime, okay? And then you say, but it was not a crime at the time that I committed it. So you're basically, you're admitting to the actions. I, sh I should rephrase. You're admitting to the actions that the prosecution is alleging is a crime, where in reality you are arguing it is, yes, I did that. You're absolutely right, but it's not a crime, okay? Self-defense is a similar one. Yes, I did hit him or her, but I acted in self-defense because they came at me first, right? It's an affirmative defense, and that has to be asserted in court, and if you don't assert it, you've waived it. Um, Choice of evils is another example. Choice of evils, I, uh, you know, there's this uh, very, very silly, but uh, it's just the only one that's coming to mind right now, uh, example of, you know, you're, you see a bus and it's full of people uh, and it's rolling down the hill and it's about to reach like the end of the cliff, right? And you're intoxicated. You're, you're drunk off your, off your butt. Uh, but you spring into action, you realize if you don't act, all every single one of the people on the bus is going to die. They're going to fall off a cliff and they're all going to burn and, and blow up. So you spring into action, you jump you know, into the, the bus's uh, driver's seat, and you still crash, but you don't fall off the cliff and only half the people die. 
So can you be charged with a crime for killing half of the people on the bus is the question. And the answer is, of course, it's the lesser of two evils. I had a choice of not jumping into the bus and letting every single one of them die. It's more of a philosophical question on top of it, if you if you noticed. So, uh, you know, do you save the people and and risk being charged with a crime and then have to assert the 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 self def not self defense? I'm sorry, the choice of evils argument in court, or do you, that's the philosophical question. And then the legal question is, if you do do that. It, can you assert, and this is where you would assert, the choice of evil's defense. Again, an affirmative defense. I had a choice, Your Honor, to not get in that bus or get in that bus. I chose to get in even though I I would, I would, operated it under the influence. But instead, I saved half of the bus, whereas if I didn't act, every single individual would have been dead. So again, another example of an affirmative defense. And in this case, we're talking about entrapment, okay? And entrapment is an affirmative defense. If you don't assert it, you've waived it. And in order to beat a case, the jury would have to, you have to get an instruction. We'll come to that in a moment. You have to have the judge instruct the jury fully on the law of entrapment, how it works, what the elements are. And if this is not the, the prosecution, this is up to the defense to show that there is evidence to support the defense. And then the prosecution, I believe, uh, by beyond a reasonable doubt has to disprove that entrapment works here. Uh, I don't think the defense has to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. They just have to show it's either a preponderance of the evidence or um, uh, clear and convincing. I'm not 100% because I, I normally don't practice in this field of law, so you have to excuse me. Uh, I, I've never done an entrapment case. This is completely outside my field. So, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. So the prosecution, then the burden goes back on the prosecution to disprove uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, of course, because that's always their standard uh, in, when it comes to criminal offenses in front of a jury, that the, the, the entrapment defense does not work, okay? So that's the first question. Is the officer's conduct entrapment? In, in that statement that we read earlier. And the second question is, why can the cops lie and we can't? And a lot of people uh, blend entrapment and lying in the same category. And I see why. I see why they try to merge those two. Like, you know, a cop stopping you on the side of the road starts asking you questions. Can that be entrapment? We'll get to why that's absolutely no way Jose is almost ever going to happen. However, the, the question that people are truly trying to ask is, it's, like I said, it's a two-part question. It's really two questions in one. Um, and they're, they're slightly related, but they're not really all that related. So uh, the question really is, the second question is, can the officers lie on the street? It will almost never be entrapment, and I'll get to why in a minute. And can they lie, and why uh, can we lie, and then why can't we, or can we, or can the officer lie in court, and so on. So we'll cover all of those all of those bases here. So let's 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 discuss, right? That's the question. What is entrapment? We got to start with the basics, right? What is entrapment? And let's start with the legal definition, like uh, you would imagine I would. The definition of entrapment is it's a noun in criminal law, the act of law enforcement officers or government agents. Okay, that's the first part. So it's got to be a law enforcement or government agent. That's the first element. Inducing or encouraging a person. That's kind of the second element. It comes in two parts. Inducing or encouraging a person to commit a crime. Okay, that's two A and B. When the potential, but the, excuse me, the potential criminal expresses a desire not to go ahead. That's the third element. And the key to entrapment is, this is, this is the key, right? The key to entrapment is whether the idea, the idea, listen very carefully, the idea for the commission or encouragement of the criminal act originated. Where did it start? Where did it originate? Where was it born? Where did it sprout? Did it do so with the police? Or did it do so with the government agent? I'm sorry. Did it do so with the police or government agent or the quote-unquote criminal? And I put it in quotes because 
again, it's an affirmative defense. And if you assert it, no crime has been committed, you're acquitted, you go home. So entrapment, if proved by the defense, is a defense to a criminal prosecution. The accused often claims entrapment, and this is the most common example, and we'll cover a couple of those, in so-called stings in which undercover agents buy or sell narcotics or prostitute services or arrange to purchase goods believed to be stolen. Narcotics is usually the most common one, but I'm sure you've all heard of soliciting of prostitution. Um, the actual question is, this is the real question that entrapment asks, would Joe Citizen have purchased the drugs if not pressed by the narc or sold the drugs if not pressed by the narc? Let's say he didn't have the drugs on him. He had to go get them from somewhere. If the narc had to harp and press and say, hey, man, come on, go go get me the stuff, and blah, 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 blah. Um, that would require that, okay? So if Joe Citizen would not have done the act without, if not being pressed, well, then entrapment kicks in. If he would have acted anyway, and again, this is all has to be proven in court, then there is no entrapment. Uh, I'm sorry, if, if I may have misspoke, if he would have acted anyway, there is, no, yeah, there's no entrapment. Okay, I said it right. And then if the pressing of the narc is what sparked the action by the so-called alleged criminal, then there is clear entrapment. Uh, and then if you go to the plain definition of uh, entrapment, it is the state of being caught in or as in a trap, obviously, or more aptly, the action of tricking. Listen to that word. This is not the legal definition. This is a plain definition. The action of tricking someone into committing a crime to secure their prosecution. So trick, okay? It sounds devious. You're tricking someone into doing something. Um, so if it did not originate in the so-called criminal's mind, but originated in the police or government's agent mind, the idea to purchase or sell drugs, prostitution, illegal goods, etc. If it originated with the police, that's entrapment. If it originated with the so-called alleged criminal, then that's a crime and they can be prosecuted to the full extent of the law and convicted of it. Okay? This is not easy stuff. This is actually quite complex. So if you guys are having trouble following this along, it's really not that big a deal. Um, Re-listen to it after we're done here, and um, you, eventually you'll catch on. It sometimes it takes a little bit to to understand what is what is actually happening. I know a lot of you are probably getting it, um, but yeah. So let's say a uh, police officer. Stops you on the side of the road. Okay, now we're, we're deviating from entrapment for just a moment. I want to talk about uh, a police officer's interaction with you. A police officer stops you on the side of the road, and he says or she says to you that they pulled you over for a broken taillight. Okay? That is not entrapment. Even though you may not have a broken taillight, they're lying to your face. You are absolutely sure. You even check later. Uh, your taillight is working, but they lied to you. I pulled you over. They invented probable cause, okay? Because police, especially experienced police officers know they need probable cause to pull you over. And if they don't have probable cause to pull you over, they know that the case will get thrown out, especially if they find something or, uh, you know, find stuff or find that you're under the influence or what have you. So let's say the, the cop simply didn't like your look. Maybe you were DWB or DWH, which is driving while black, driving while Hispanic, you know, in the wrong neighborhood at the wrong time in the wrong place. And they're just like, okay, I want to pull this vehicle over, but I don't have, I don't have probable cause. I don't have reasonable suspicion of anything. Um, so what, what am I going to do? Right. <laughs> JJ just donated $5 and says, loan me 15. You're cute, man. Um, so the the officer has his own personal suspicions. Maybe he's biased. Maybe he's racist. She, you know, who, whatever. Who knows? Who cares? 
But he wants to cover his bases by telling you he did have reasonable suspicion to stop you just to get you to open up so you start talking and start giving away the, the kid and caboodle, basically, as they say, right? So the him or her are lying to you and saying, I pulled you over for a broken taillight, now talk to me. That is not entrapment, okay? The idea of you starting to admit to the officer, officer, I had two beers, sorry, uh, can you let me go now? No, come out of the car and do field sobriety tests, you're under arrest and all that. Can you argue entrapment there? Absolutely not. Because the idea of the so-called alleged crime did not in any way, shape, or form originate with the police officer. Okay, That's a whole different story. This is a question of a legal question of whether or not the officer had reasonable suspicion to pull you over. Okay, So this is the most common question I get. That's not entrapment. It cannot be in any way, shape, or form entrapment by the legal definition. Okay, So the Officer lying to you, to your face, is just something that they can do while they're on the street, okay? Um, that's, that's it. That's with, with respect to him pulling you over. Now, even if you admit fault, if the officer had reasonable suspicion, and if that reasonable suspicion, this is the key, if it's based on a lie, Let's say he said, I pulled you over for that. Let's go back to that broken taillight. I pulled you over for a broken taillight. Do you realize what you've done? Uh, uh, you know, you need to get that fixed, blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, I detect a, a faint odor of alcohol. Have you been drinking tonight, sir or ma'am? Uh, you know, you stupidly admit, say, yeah, and step out of the car, and you get arrested for a DUI. And you go to court, you tell your lawyer this, and your lawyer goes, okay, here's what I think we should do. Uh, first... I think we have a defense because you're saying that the taillight was not broken. The officer lied about it. And good news. We have video of the police dash cam, for example. And let's say the police body cam. And it clearly shows because he argued on the stand that this is the left taillight that was broken. But on video, it's clearly lit. I mean, it will be the dumbest cop in the world, I would imagine. But you never know. You might run into a case like that. I've had some that are similar, not exactly like that. It was, uh, it was actually a light on the registration plate, but the prosecutor gave that up pretty quickly because they realized that, uh, I mean, it was, it was clear that it was lit on the, on the dash cam. So, uh, and that was the only reason that the officer alleged that he pulled our client over for. So, but going back to the whole taillight example, if, if the taillight is clearly lit and it's on video and you have proof you may be able to get that case thrown out, but not because of entrapment, again, because now you have proven or shown to the court that the officer lacked reasonable suspicion to pull you over because, he, as he or she already indicated in their citation and their testimony uh, on the stand, whatever, that they pulled you over for a broken taillight, the left broken taillight. If you show proof that it was not broken, I mean, that's the easiest case in the world almost, right? Like there's no, you just killed the reasonable suspicion Therefore, there's no probable cause for the arrest, no reasonable suspicion for the stop, no probable cause for the arrest. All evidence is thrown out, fruit of the poisonous tree. Uh, thank you, Mr. Te Mr. Tex. Is that is that you who sent it, by the way? Somebody somebody sent me some uh, some drinks to the office. And I really appreciate it. Was that you, Mr. Tex, 1954? Sorry, I, I have to, to put a pause on, on my lecture because that's... Thank you for the $5 dono on top of that, by the way. Holy crap. Okay, I suspected it was somebody. There was no note. Nobody left a note or anything. I, I really appreciate it, man. We've been enjoying it. I think we have like um, uh, 3, 6, 9, 12. There's like 24 plus... There's like 40 left. 40. We have about 20 left, so... Thank you, Mr. Tex. I'm glad that I'm drinking it on stream because uh, uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, Jay. Thank you so much, Mr. Tex. I was wondering. I suspected, but I, obviously I had no confirmation. Like I said, there was no note or anything. Yeah, everybody, Mr. Tex, uh, 1954 here, uh, sent me, s sent the office, myself and my associates, some drinks to the office. And uh, 
it was a mystery until this stream. I'm glad you're here, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Guy, so much. And thank you guys in general. But holy crap, that's so cool. Thank you again, Mr. Tex. Uh, now, now I finally know. Now I have confirmation of where it came from. I appreciate that. Sorry, I'm still, I'm still a little shocked. You probably see me blushing right now. Um, that's just so cool. Um, do you work for that company? Is that <laughs> I'm advertising them for you? You're welcome. It, it's core. I'll, I'll just do it because I think it's hilarious and awesome. Um, core hydrating uh, drink, pretty good stuff. Uh, I guess I helped you in some way. I'm, I'm not even sure what I did, but anyway, let's get back to our topic. So, um, so yeah, no reasonable suspicion, therefore no probable cause, therefore, uh, the case will be thrown out. Now, unless you have video footage, of course, that is the extreme case. That is the optimal case. If it's going to be your word against the officers, you can forget about it. You're pretty much screwed. You're going to lose no, almost no judge in the universe will accept your testimony of our police officers. I mean, think about it. If citizens' testimony would be taken over the cops at any point in time, at every point in time, the system would collapse, would completely collapse. I mean, it just, it's not going to work. Their officers are going to be believed 99.999% of the time, unless you give the court reason not to believe them, such as credibility issues, um, uh, you know, uh, disciplinary history, and so on and so forth. Duke Savage, thank you for the $5 dono, man. I really appreciate it. And thanks for the comment. Um, so now let's talk about you on the street, okay? This is another very, very interesting question. Can I, as Joe Citizen, lie to the police officer on the street? Well, the answer might shock you. The answer is yes. Absolutely, you can. There is absolutely no law in the universe that is stopping you from not telling the officer the full truth at the time that he is asking he or she is asking you questions on the side of the road or in any encounter with the police. Okay? There is absolutely no law period to dictate that. Now, here's the kicker though. If your lie is detected by the cop by his little antenna and he goes, uh, I'm not buying this story. You know, you said you were coming from a friend's house and you're going home, but by your trajectory, you know, you you said your friend lives at 123 Main Street, you live at 745 Market Street, and you're on Floyd, which is completely out of your trajectory. This smells something fishy here. So let's let's investigate further. Um then it, it, the officer is a lot more likely to investigate you and potentially arrest you because what are you lying about? You know, and they're going to start investigating and they're going to find whatever you're trying to hide. And then you're probably hiding a crime. Otherwise, why would you be hiding it? And so if he catches you, he or she, excuse me, catches you in that lie, they're a lot more likely to investigate further and you're more likely to be arrested as a result. And then, of course, that lie uh, is probably going to be used against you in court because you shouldn't have told the officer not the not the truth. You told him you told him the lie, so that's going to be used against you, uh, especially since you volunteered that information. Because at, at the time, assuming again that at the time of the stop you were not uh, under uh, you you were interrogated by the cop, you but you weren't detained, right? So if you weren't detained, that's going to be that's going to be a problem for you, not for the government. Now, let's come to the most, most important question. And then, uh, what about lying on the stand? Um... And yeah, that's exactly why you hardly ever answer questions. Northern Corruption Monitor 907 says, don't, don't ever talk to the police. I have a, a great, great, great um, video on that, why you should never, ever, 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 ever talk to the police. And uh, this is the link, by the way. I'm going to send it right here. We're not going to get into that topic. I've spent an hour on that topic uh, in a different stream. So feel free, peruse that, enjoy it. It's uh, very good stuff, very good stuff. 
Uh, so in, in on the stand in court, neither you nor the police officer are permitted to lie on the stand, period. That is called perjury. And if you're caught in it, you can be charged with a felony, both on the state and federal level. Okay? So don't do it. That's where it is a crime. On the street, you can do whatever you want. In court is when you take the oath and you are not permitted to violate it. But there's a problem, and we all know what that problem is. Oh, I'm sorry. Is the link bad? Oh, that's weird. One second. Sorry. That is so strange. Oh, that's why. My bad. Let me go ahead and fix it. There we go. That's it. Yeah, Flotog. That's it. There you go. Um, Jay-Z says, if you represent a client who you got out of punishment, punishment that they deserve, they go back, commit a DUI, kill someone, what then? Uh, that's another question for another time because we're not talking about that right now. But thank you for the $5 dono, Jay-Z. And then Red gives me two bucks for a pack of gum. Thanks, brother. Okay, so yeah, that's that's the the link. And me, F Lotog and I both shared it. It's the it's the same link. So uh, sorry about that. That was my bad. Um, okay, so again, on the street, not a crime. In court, crime. Got it? You cannot lie. Now the problem. As we all know, you are not a professional, I hope, a professional con artist, a professional liar. You know, a police officer, unfortunately, is not only a professional, but he's also or she are backed by the system. So the prosecutor, the judge, they're all backing the police officer's story. By the way, don't forget to like this video comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you haven't already so you get notified uh, whenever I post new videos or go uh, go live, which is every Saturday, uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, as you all know. Um, so you're at a disadvantage. You're at a disadvantage when you testify versus when a police officer testifies. So that's not your fault. It's just the way the system is set up. It's biased. It's corrupt it's slanted it's designed to work against you so the officer is not allowed to lie just like you are the only problem is even if he is unless the defense is able to show and prove that whatever they're saying they're being dishonest about good luck good luck being able to pin that on him and the court will never will never go out of its way so uh, but these things do happen. I have seen cops being outed on the stand while they're while they're lying. Uh, but again, it would be with like a recording, an individual recording of of the suspect that they had like on their cell phone, and and those unfortunately are very very rare. Um, so yeah. Um, in Kentucky. In Kentucky, the uh, coming back to entrapment, okay? So we talked about what entrapment is. We talked about what entrapment is not. We talked about the second question that you all posed about uh, an officer lying on the stand, lying in the street, and you lying on the street and lying on the stand. Let's get back to entrapment, okay? In... Kentucky Revised Statute 505.010 is where it is codified in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And it reads, A person is not guilty of an offense arising out of prescribed conduct when he was induced or encouraged to engage in that conduct by a public servant or by a person acting in cooperation with a public servant seeking to obtain evidence against him for the purpose of criminal prosecution. Basically what we already said. Uh, induced or encouraged to engage by a person acting in cooperation with a public servant or a public servant themselves. So public servant meaning a government agent, somebody who works for the government. 
such as a police officer. And at the time of the inducement or encouragement, he was not otherwise disposed to engage in such conduct. Again, cannot originate in their mind. If it originated in their mind, entrapment fails immediately. The relief afforded by subsection one is unavailable when the public servant or the person acting in cooperation with a public servant merely affords the defendant an opportunity to commit an offense. See, if it originated in the criminal's mind, just the, the government agent simply created the circumstances where the, the offender uh, was simply given an opportunity to present uh, the, the buy or the sell. That's not enough. The offense charged has, uh, or B, the offense charged has physical injury or the threat of physical injury as one of its elements, and the prosecution is based on conduct causing threatening injury to a person other than the person perpetrating the entrapment. Or three, uh, the relief provided by a def uh, provided a defendant by subsection one is a defense. We, we don't need to get into that. So, for example. In Ferris v. Commonwealth, which is 836 Southwest 2nd, 451, a Kentucky appellate court case from 1992, it was a, a, a drug trafficking case. Uh, the defendant was entitled to an instruction on entrapment since his testimony was that, number one, he never transferred drugs before. Number two, he only knew where to locate cocaine because of his prior usage. And three, he received no benefit from his participation in the transfer of the cocaine other than satisfying an undercover police informant for whom he had feelings. I think that's a big, big factor here. Supports his entrapment defense. OK, so um, defendant was entitled to an instruction in, in a case like that. And for instance, if a defendant is claiming an entrapment defense satisfies the burden to demonstrate that he was induced to engage in the criminal conduct by government agents seeking to obtain evidence against him for the purpose of a criminal prosecution. This is what I already talked about. The burden then shifts to the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was predisposed to engage in the criminal act prior to the inducement by the government or its agents. So if the government can show beyond a reasonable doubt, no, 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 it wasn't me. He would have done it anyway. Well, then you lose, and the entrapment defense fails. That's Morrow v. Commonwealth, uh, 286 Southwest 3rd, 206, a Kentucky Supreme Court case from 2009. And the facts of Morrow, uh, in Morrow, evidence supported a finding that the defendant induced by the government informant to engage in a transaction involving the sale of prescription drugs was not predisposed to engage in drug trafficking. And thus he was entitled to a jury instruction on an entrapment defense. So the judge never allowed the jury to hear the entrapment uh, defense instruction when he instructed the jury before they retired to discuss the case on an entrapment defense in a prosecution for complicity to commit first degree trafficking in a controlled substance. Okay. Although there were rumors that the defendant had been involved in the drug trade, the defendant employed as a part-time deputy jailer at the time of his arrest had never been in any trouble prior to his arrest repeatedly indicated to the informant. He did not sell drugs and was not involved in drugs, and he was not initially named by the informant as being among the people known to have involvement in the drug trade. Big, 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 big facts supporting an entrapment defense, as you can all clearly see. Um, so the court there, by not issuing, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, allowing the jury to hear an entrapment defense instruction, the Supreme Court said, no, 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 and sent the case back for a retrial. Um, and by the way, you don't have to testify in order to assert the entrapment defense. Uh, that's Wyatt v. Commonwealth in 219 Southwest 3rd, 751, also Supreme Court case of Kentucky from 2007. Um, you do not have to testify to obtain the entrapment instruction if evidence supports it from the prosecution or other defense witnesses. So you can have um, uh, other witnesses other than your client 
testify, uh, or maybe just, I, I, I doubt it would ever work if you just have the government testify, the government witnesses, the cops essentially testify about it, but you never know. You might have a scenario where that might work. So that's in Kentucky. So uh, the defense is available, I think in all 50 states. Uh, I can't imagine why, why it wouldn't be. Uh, but I want to talk about, so that was, that was Kentucky. There was a few cases Ferris, Morrow, and Wyatt uh, from Kentucky. And before before I end, I want to I want to talk about a federal case. And this one, this one is from the United States Supreme Court. So this one applies across the board to all fifty states. So all of you can get like a little bit more familiarity, not just from the Kentucky side, but more of the federal side. So you can see the big picture. This is the United States Supreme Court. Um, 63 years ago, issuing a decision, 1958. Uh, pretty popular decision on entrapment, very classic. Uh, Sherman v. United States, uh, and the site is uh, 356 U.S. 369, and that's United States Supreme Court, 1958. Uh, the second side of it is 78 Supreme Court, 819, for those of you aficionados out there. Um, so here's what happened. Uh, in late August 1951, Kalchinian, that's the name of the government informant, first met Petitioner, who was Sherman, at a doctor's office, okay? They apparently were both being treated uh, to be cured of addiction to drugs. They met several times. Uh, either at the doctor's office, at the pharmacy, as they were filling out their prescriptions. And just from, from passing, mere greetings and conversation, uh, it progressed to a discussion of mutual experiences with drugs and problems with drugs, including their attempts to overcome addiction to drugs. Now, finally, Kalchinian, the informant, asked the petitioner if the latter knew of any good sources of drugs. And he asked petitioner to supply him with a source because, well, apparently he was not responding to treatment. That's what the informant was saying. From the very beginning, this is very key. From the very beginning, uh, the petitioner, Sherman, tried to avoid the issue. You know, he wasn't having any anything to do with it. He didn't want to get involved in that stuff. And not until after several repetitions of the request, this is key, right? The idea is not originating in Sherman's mind. It's originating in Kalchinian's mind. Because Kalchinian kept pressing and pressing and pressing after several repetitions and predicated not only on, on his request, predicated on Kalchinian's presumed suffering, saying, look, I, I need drugs. I need my drugs, man. I, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. This this treatment is not working for me. I'm suffering. Please help me. Give me a source. Give me some drugs. Finally, Sherman was like, "Okay, all right, I'll help you." All right. You see where it is. I mean, this is this is atrocious work on the part of the government. Just disgusting. And several times thereafter, uh, Sherman obtained drugs and he shared them with Kalchinian. So, by the way, notice here. Not only did, not only did Kalchinian get Sherman to go get him drugs, they shared the drugs. He brought the poor guy, poor bastard who was already addicted, was trying to get treatment. He was getting him right back into the habit. I mean, can you think of anything more gross to do? And it gets worse, by the way. Each time petitioner... Each time Sherman, that is, told Kalchinian that the total cost of narcotics he obtained was $25, Kalchinian only owed him $15. So about uh, two-fifths he was using himself, and three-fifths he would give to Kalchinian. So Kalchinian bore the cost of the share, the $15, plus the taxi and other expenses necessary to obtain the drugs. After several sales, Kalchinian informed the Bureau of Narcotics that he had another seller for them, 
Sherman. And on three occasions during November 1951, government agents observed Sherman give narcotics to Colchinian in return for money supplied by the government. Okay? Boom. Hey, Ink Spot. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Kevin. Um, disgusting. So he only brought the agents in after, Kalchinian that is, after he coaxed Sherman to go sell him some drugs, after he convinced them. And he was, again, he was not a government actor in himself. He was um, uh, supplied by the government. So he was, it was as if he was working for the government. And then it was a trial. And the factual issue was whether uh, Kalchinian had convinced an otherwise unwilling person, Sherman, to commit a criminal act or whether Sherman was already predisposed to commit the act and exhibited only the natural hesitancy of one acquainted with the narcotics trade. So, you know, when people, when someone asks someone else to buy drugs, they don't go, yeah, absolutely. What do you want? How much do you want? People are usually very reluctant because they don't know who's on the other side, especially in this case where it's a stranger. So the issue of entrapment uh, went to the jury and they convicted him. Sherman got, you'll never guess this, Sherman got 10 years in prison. 10 years And he appealed, Sherman, <clears throat> and the Court of Appeals in the Second Circuit said, affirmed. And then it got to the Supreme Court. And this is why this decision is so beautiful. Uh, the Supreme Court, Mr. Chief Justice Warren, held that undisputed testimony, listen to this, undisputed testimony of prosecution's witnesses established that defendant was convicted in the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York of illegal sale of narcotics and his conviction was affirmed. But the Supreme Court with Mr. Chief Justice Warren also held that undisputed testimony of prosecution's witnesses established entrapment as a defense, as a matter of law in that the defendant obtained drugs for uh, the defendant, that's Sherman. So Sherman obtained drugs for uh, Kalchinian only after repeated persuasion, including appeal to sympathy and inducement of defendant himself to return to narcotics habit. And the court said, no, that is not okay. So, and they reversed and remanded the case back to the, the district court. So as a matter of law, they said the entrapment worked. So I'm guessing the case was probably dismissed, but not after Sherman served his fair share in prison because that all happened in uh, 1951 in November. So let's, let's call it 1952. Um, it was probably convicted very shortly thereafter in 1952 or 53 and this decision came out in 1958. So he served a, a five or six year term, a five or six year sentence before he was released. Um, that's, that's just, that's just crazy and completely undeserving. Um, thank you for the $5 uh, dono, Steve Stevens. Um, my opinion on the McDavid case, I haven't been following it. Uh, it will, if we talk about it, it will be a separate live stream. That's a whole different conversation. Um, so basically, uh, it boils down to this. Just because a police officer is lying to you on the street does not mean that it's entrapment. Almost in any stretch of the imagination. Only in the narrow uh, examples that I have provided does entrapment really truly work uh oh bye cam i hope your family member feels better i'm, I'm sorry to hear that 
Thanks for stopping by. Uh, thanks, RJ Scum. It says, thanks for the lessons. So, yeah, I mean, this this is a lesson, for real. Um, just because a cop is lying to you does not mean that there's entrapment. Only if they begin to coerce or coax you into committing a crime that you have not committed yet and encourage its commission. And the idea of its commission originates in their mind, not in your mind. Because if they come and say, look, uh, do you have any drugs for sale? And you go, sure, yeah, hold on. I got some right here. Uh, let me let me provide them for you. Uh, that's not entrapment, even though they're a cop. You just you just got screwed. You're an idiot. Uh, you just, uh, you're just you about to sell drugs to a cop. And once you do, you're probably going to get charged. So if you do it on your own. But if they coerce you, hey, man, I'd like to get some drugs. No, I, I'm not interested in selling. I don't have any, I don't, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and then they keep harping. Come on, man. Come on. Let's go ahead. Let's let's do this. Especially making the person out of sympathy, God bless, out of sympathy to go and get drugs from somewhere else to sell to you. I mean, that that's just, that's just sick. That's just sad. So you have to do it on your own. So that's the only way that you're ever going to be able to prove entrapment legally, okay? Because people throw that word around way, way, way too much. I've seen it in comments. I've seen it in, isn't that entrapment? Isn't that entrapment? It's not, okay? Now you know. Now you know. Uh, any advice for hiring a lawyer in advance? Andrew, I don't understand what it means in advance. Like before you commit a crime, please don't commit crimes willingly okay that's not smart that's not good advice um but if you want to just have a lawyer on retainer just in case i don't know i think it's very sh shady stuff uh I've, I've gotten asked that i think once or twice and i usually reject it basically yeah kevin coburn th that's fair to say in short it's almost never entrapment. Entrapment is just so bloody narrow that for you to fall under the category of entrapment, I mean, you have to really, really, really be caught in a very narrow set of circumstances that involve the government coming. They don't have to come to you necessarily, but 99 times out of 100, they will because they're the ones interested. Like, let's say there's a rumor that you're a drug dealer, for instance, and they want to try and pin it on you. So they send an informant to try and, and do a controlled buy, you know, um, short of that, you're, or prostitution, or they find out that, you know, that you're a prostitute, or they find out you have some illegal goods for sale, and, and you don't do it willingly, and they have to force it out of you, that's where entrapment kicks in. Not even a box of bubble gum, and I think selling bubble gum is not illegal unless you're price gauging, <laughs> Mr. Awesome Jimenez. Uh, no, Inkspot has been a member for a short while. Yeah, very, very short while. But he's been he's been watching for a while. What do I think of lawyer insurance? Uh, it's normal. I'm insured. Uh, it's called malpractice insurance. Never had to use it, you know, knock on wood. But uh, you got to have it just in case because you never know what crazy clients uh, I'm going to pick up. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the lecture. Does anybody – I want to open up the floor to questions. Uh, we're still going to be here for a little while. I want to answer questions that you guys have. I, I want to not veer off topic too much. I'd like to stay on topic as much as we possibly can. Um, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll throw I'll throw some curveballs out there if you guys have some questions that are uh, tangentially related. But if you start talk, asking me questions about what happened at the Capitol on Wednesday, I'm just going to ignore you. Okay, fair warning. Um, uh, hello, Jag Pimp says he's new here. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. When does the fifth amendment apply? Uh, too off topic. I'm not going to touch that. How much do I cost? It varies depending on what you need. If someone asks you to do something illegal and they are significantly larger than you, 
Can you do it? You did it because you felt threatened. That is a choice of evil's defense, by the way, Krellbar. Remember I made that example about the whole um, the school bus full of people that you are. Oh, by the way, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And if you're so inclined, welcome, uh, join as a member. You're more than welcome to. So uh, basically a big bully is asking you to do something illegal and your fear of getting beat up uh, is greater than your fear of going to commit a crime. Yeah, good luck with that. You're probably going to lose. Unless they're threatening uh, that they're, they're going to kill you. Maybe there you have a stronger argument. How credible is the death threat? I mean, is the crime so petty that the jury will be like, wow, this guy's just an idiot and, and maybe a quit? Or is the crime so severe like they threaten to kill you if you go, unless you go kill someone else? Very vague question. Uh, need a lot more information, obviously, to be able to answer that. Um, what's the difference of a DUI with pot and a DUI with alcohol? Uh, Hey, uh, F Lotog, you want to jump on this one? Can you give him the link to, to that video on my channel to Krellbar? Uh, the video that I did when I talk about the difference. I'm sorry, not Krellbar. Uh, Deluna85403 asked that question. Uh, do you mind hooking him up with the, the link to the, the video that I did, the live stream on the difference between pot and alcohol DUI? I would appreciate it, man. Uh, does malpractice insurance cover you from sanctions? I don't think so. Maybe. Hopefully we'll never get there. Yeah, the, under duress, cocaine, uh, it's, mm, again, good luck with that. It, it's it's a kind of a choice of evils arguing you're under duress. Those almost never work. Never work. Thank you, Jacob. Um, are intersection camera tickets and speed traps, photo tickets, illegal entrapment? There it is. There's the question again. Is that entrapment? Did they coerce you? What did I just talk about, Spencer? Did, did the camera coerce you into speeding, into running the red light? Where's the entrapment? Okay. Come on. I literally just talked about it for a whole hour. Were you listening? <sighs> Is that entrapment? No. The answer is no. Was the officer prosecuted in that case I described in the 50s? I don't think it was a cop. Uh, like I said, it was an informant um, that tried to get Sherman to uh, to do all that stuff. So there was no cop to be prosecuted. And was, Sher was uh, Kalichkin or whatever his name was prosecuted? Uh, probably not. Can my next stream be on mask mandates? Hmm, I'm going to write that down. I might do that at some point. I don't know if it'll be the next one, but um, I did something similar early on. But uh, again, you guys are asking me questions that are, are so outside my area of expertise. I have to do a lot of research, but I don't mind. If I can talk about it, I'll talk about it. Hey, Russell. Uh, that's okay, Krellbar. Uh, polygraph. If you've been told failed but you haven't, is that a form of entrapment? No, they're just lying to you, I guess. I don't know. Strange question. Is it true that if you're drunk driving and get pulled over before the cop walks to the car and you hold a pont out the window and crack it open and slam it, he cannot prove you were drunk driving. I'm not talking about that today. Pint, yeah. Uh, if I accidentally hit a dog and the officer didn't see me driving and I did my legal duty to find the owner and offer help in Michigan, sounds like an actual case, and they handcuff me and insist that I have to take a blood draw, I don't know Michigan law. One, do you submit to a breathalyzer? I have a video on that. And two... For police, do police have the authority to give more than one type of test? Depends on the state. Thank you, F. Lotog. He, he linked the... Um, oh, wait. No, the link is broken. No, the link is broken, F. Lotog. 
Uh, nope, they're both broken. Because it's it says studio.youtube. Why does it say studio? Here we go. I just gotta delete the um just gotta delete the studio portion. Here we go. This is the link. Uh the difference between alcohol and uh pot DUIs. Do a video on po uh, polygraphs? Um hmm, maybe. I'll write that down. You guys are giving me topics today. It's really good. Keep them coming. Um, I lost where I was. Uh, I don't want to miss any questions, but I probably will. The difference between... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Can we give a round of applause for the Swift mod? Oh, I, I don't know what you guys did. I saw a few people were being blocked, but Matthew Inman, I'm with you on that. Thank you to our moderators. Today we had uh, Kim. She left. Unfortunately, she had some family troubles. And uh, F. Lotog, welcome to being a moderator. So I appreciate it, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Both Kim and F. Lotog moderating. Uh, Matthew Inman, thanks for the props. They deserve it. Is them selling you drugs considered entrapment? Yes, Joe Bob. That can also work the other way. So in my example, uh, or in your example, excuse me, of someone coming up to you and saying, hey, would you like to buy some drugs? No, no, I'm not interested. Thank you. Ah, come on. They're good drugs. Uh, you know, no, no, I'm not interested. I really appreciate it. No, no, no. Seriously, I'll give it to you on the cheap. Hell, the first sample is free. Come on, just give it a shot. Fine. Okay, here. Oh, you're under arrest for the purchase of narcotics. Please. You know, that's that's not it, it can't work. That's entrapment that you're going to be able to argue the defense of entrapment because you had to be coaxed. Now, again, depends on how quickly they coax you. If it takes two seconds, probably not entrapment. If it takes two hours, almost definitely entrapment. Um, RJ Scum says, I remember me and my buds got pulled over with a claim that we were flipping people off. We weren't, but if we were, is that a legal stop? Maybe, depending on the laws of your jurisdiction. Um, if allowed a jury instruction on entrapment, who decides the entrapment? The jury, of course. Thanks, Judd. Speed trap is not speed entrapment. Two completely different things, Colin Power. Kyle Kokel says, well, the camera could look at you funny. Maybe that's entrapment. No. Nice try, though. They almost never prosecute cops anyway. You're right, Kevin. Hey, Don. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh... What is this website on YouTube? Helene Webster. I'm not sure what you're asking. Do police officers avoid any trouble when committing criminal activity during entrapment or working undercover? I mean, they could get in trouble. Probably with a department, not legally. Probably be taken off the job. What is an informant? An addict who decided to work for the government before and after he went to rehab. Yeah. Yep. Polygraph. If they tell you that you fail but you haven't, is that entrapment? I don't know. It depends. I'm in Kentucky, yes. Um. What do you do if you drink and drive? Do you have to submit to the tests? I have videos on all of those things. So I will not be answering them today. Banjo Screen Pies says, I love to see the massive growth in your channel. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, it, it has been growing insanely fast. Um, I'm literally stumped. Let's see. Did I hit 57,000 su su uh, 57, subs while... Yep, 
Wow. Holy. 50, well, almost at 57,100 already just while I was sitting here talking. Wow. Okay. Whew. Um, did Sherman or the entrapment cases receive compensation? Yeah, because he spent five, six years in prison. No, they, they usually don't get compensation for it, uh, especially when the decision that was made was right. I mean, it was, he wasn't exonerated. Um, and I don't know what the lower court did, but any differences in legal entrapment concept from Texas? I don't know Texas law. I can't answer that. Can you explain the but for test? The but for test. What is the but for test, Busy Banty? Did I just fall? Holy crap, I just fell for that one so hard, didn't I? <laughs> you know, because in my mind, I was thinking we do have, uh, there is a, a but for analysis, you know, in the legal realm, but for this happening, this would not happen. But at the same time, it's also the oldest joke in the book. You know, Google butt for it. what's a butt for, and then you fall for it. Either way, I think I still fell for it. That's entrapment. You're absolutely right, Quantum Flare. Now that is the definition of entrapment. <laughs> oh man. Uh, no, okay. Uh, now that I already fell for it, uh, fabled prion, nice try. I'm not going, uh, not going in that direction. Oh man, thank you. I needed that. Uh, when does the jury not decide? Asks Deluna. That's a great question. Uh, questions of law. So questions of fact are decided by the jury was the fact is or is not, but a judge decides is the law is or is not like applicable. Um, if you stick a lot of valuable goods in front of a very poor person, does that constitute entrapment? That's a different type of entrapment. That's asking to get beat up and getting the goods stolen from you. Thanks, Judd. What are your thoughts on cops not doing anything if you have a PBA card? Um, I have to Google that. Police Benevolent Association? Um, I don't know. That, that sounds very shady. That's extremely shady. Courtesy cards typically given to friends and families of cops who use them to request clemency. Are you kidding me? What? Wow. Some departments even reportedly gift the cards to local journalists and politicians. That is disgusting. So basically you're you're a card carrying member of the the club, so you're untouchable. I mean, that's like uh Masons or whatever that that thing is. The Masons. Can I speak on Europe's Article 13? Uh, probably won't touch that since uh, three-quarters to four-fifths of my audience is in the Americas. And they're probably not going to be very interested in that. Uh, but thank you for the $5 dono, Matthew, regardless. Busy Banty, thank you for the 5 bucks as well. Jacob Cox, thanks for the 10 bro. 
Um, yeah, it's it's a union, Brian Long. Can you sue a city for being arrested for not fighting? I don't know what fighting is. Uh, Alfrey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, it's late. I get it. You're in the UK. Yeah, it's a get out of jail free card. Jacob Cox, welcome to Law Novice. Thank you for joining. Welcome as a new member. Thank you, brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I feel like before I get done, we're going to be at 57,100 subscribers. This is insane. This is insane. Um, over the last hour, I've had like, Oh, you guys are going to love this. This this is crazy. This is like I said, I would normally get, I don't know, maybe like 3, 4, 5,000 views an hour. In the last hour and it's not over yet for another 3 minutes, I've gotten 25,000 views on my channel. 25,000 in 1 hour. Like what the hell? What the hell? That is incredible. Um without IDing, oh Sorry, sometimes it's hard to read these. Uh, News Now Victoria, not so silent, says, I was prosecuted for public photography. I could have sworn I was about to read that pornography and then go, "What? where's the problem? Uh, I was prosecuted for public photography in Canada. Well, Canada is different. I don't know Can Canadian laws. Uh, you guys don't have the same things that we do here in America. That's interesting. Um, thank you, 502 is watching you. you. You've been around a very long time, for at least two years. JT Crowder from Iowa, welcome. The bar is very hard, Las Vegas directions. It's very hard. Napoleon accident injury lawyer. Hey, we got another lawyer in the house. Um, cops are shady and are known to lie. Yes. Yeah, Nicola, that's what I said. Kitty Lynn says my last video title was perfection. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe that's why it's working, I guess. <laughs> you got that right, Jacob. RJ Scum asks, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> Way off topic. Uh, I don't know. Salmon and potatoes, probably. Salad. I have some couscous. Uh, <laughs> any other questions? Hey, Lysander. Hey, SVE. Schneidenmantel. Scheidenmantel. That's a cool last name if that's your last name. Scheidenmantel. Um, Saul Goodman, yes. Priceless Channel. Sure. Shout out to Priceless Channel. I don't know who you are. But let's see. What, what are you on about? Nice. 104,000 subs, man. Good job. Know your rights. Got nearly 150,000 vids. Uh, no real description, so I'm not sure what you're on about. Oh, so you're you're an audit, basically. You're an audit channel. Do you do your own audits, Priceless? Matthew Inman says, we sell because of my hair. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. So you're you're an auditor. Good for you, man. 
constitutional rights channel. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Are we at 57.1 yet? <laughs> Literally, while I'm talking, it's like, it's going beep, 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 beep. Um, well, um, <laughs> Sherry, you're too kind. I've been talking for about an hour and 25 minutes. So unless there are any other questions, we're going to terminate it here. What are the chances of winning a DUI case? It depends. Would I ever be a judge? Heck no. They don't get paid anything. Thanks, UFC champ. How did I get good at litigation? Is it something you can do while in law school? Um, don't have stage fright. That really hinders your ability. Uh, you got to love... Your, yourself, you got to love your audience, you got to love your voice, I think. And you got to be a good actor. To be a good trial lawyer, to be a good litigator, you have to be a good actor. And I always had the propensity for acting and stand up comedy when I was younger. So that really, 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 really helps. Because if you're like have stage fright and are people shy, you're not going to be able to, to be good at litigation, I don't think. Like very effective. You might still get there. I'll take a little bit longer. Um, Yes, Matthew Inman. Beers for the mods. Heck yeah. Thank you for the dono. Do I only take DUI cases? No. I also do car accidents and other criminal stuff. Cops need qualified immunity to be taken away. Audit the Audit is a great channel. I, I did an interview on Audit the Audit. Good night, Jacob. From Nebraska. Right on. Never let the cops in your house. Yeah. Are you able to get all videos of your court cases? I've been to a court a couple of times. Not sure if I can ask for the videos. Uh, most states actually don't have videos, interestingly enough. What are your thoughts on Black's Law Dictionary? It's a good piece of writing. <laughs> Thanks, Nicola. It, it is a lot of theater. I, I agree, Mark. I did not study ancient Roman law. And I'm 32. <laughs> All right, you guys. We've come to the end of another one. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you haven't already, join as a member. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so very much for coming and joining me on this lovely, lovely Saturday evening, January 9th, where we talked about entrapment, what it is, what it's not, lying, where it's okay, where it's not, both for the cop and for you. Um, I appreciate you all coming. Uh, we will be back on next Saturday. That is January the 16th. And we will be talking about, I don't even know what we're going to be talking about yet. Uh, I have not decided yet. But keep your ear to the ground. We may talk about uh, videoing the police or polygraphs, mask mandates. They, they all seem like fun uh, topics to discuss. Plea bargaining. Did I cover plea bargaining already? I can't recall. Uh, I may have talked about plea bargaining already. But no, maybe not. For some reason, I feel like I, I touched on it. But anyway, uh, maybe even jury nullification revisited. Uh, I really like that topic. I may do it again. So thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate. Uh, I may do like a, a, a vote thing. That's, that might not be a bad idea, uh, Christopher Matthias. So uh, anyway, once again, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Next Saturday, January 16th, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Central, 4.30 Mountain, 3.30 Pacific. I will be here. 
uh, talking about our next topic. Thanks again. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for your participation. Thank you to the mods for a job well done, keeping the, for taking the trash out. <laughs> for taking out the trash. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So uh, we, will, we will talk next Saturday. Have a good rest of your weekend, guys, and peace out. Stay safe. Don't get in trouble. But if you do, call me. Bye-bye.